Welcome back to another review. Today, I'm going to be analyzing the Bolliger and Mabillard Wing Coaster Wild Eagle, which opened at Dollywood in 2012. I will be discussing some of the pros and cons and giving it a final score at the end, so stay tuned. I got three rides on Wild Eagle during my trip at Dollywood. I experienced both sides as well as the back and near the middle of the train. I tried to experience this ride in as many ways as possible, but the line was typically very long for the ride, seeing as the park was quite busy, and I also ride a wing coaster very frequently at my home park, so I prioritized riding the unique coasters at the park over this. That being said, I think I got a pretty good feel for this ride overall. The layout of Wild Eagle is actually pretty generic for a B&M coaster, but it is not typical for a wing coaster specifically. Wild Eagle features a regular drop unlike the wing over drop found on most wing coasters, and there are also no prominent near misses featured, as is standard on many wing coasters. There are four inversions featured, which in sequential order are a vertical loop, a zero G roll, an Emmelman, and a corkscrew. Wild Eagle features a first drop of 135 feet, but due to its location on the mountain, it is actually situated quite high above ground level at about 210 feet. According to someone who works at the park, the peak of Wild Eagle's lift is apparently the highest point that Dollywood is permitted to build any of their rides. Due to this, it is quite impressive seeing it looming over everything in this area of the park, and the lift hill very much resembles that of a B&M Hyper. Wild Eagle features a solid top speed of 61 miles per hour, pretty good for a wing coaster, as well as 3,127 feet of track, which is pretty standard. You begin your ride experience on Wild Eagle by turning left out of the station, where you quickly rise up the lift hill. From the apex here, you get a very nice view of the park and its surroundings in the Smoky Mountains. You then descend the 135 foot drop, followed by this 110 foot tall vertical loop. After the vertical loop, you fly through the zero G roll, before turning back around into the other direction by means of an Emmelman. This is followed up by the fourth and final inversion of the ride, which is a large corkscrew. To finish off the ride, you go over a small airtime hill, where I experienced a small pop of floater airtime, and followed by this, the figure eight finale, where you go through a descending left helix, then up and into a descending right helix where you then hit the final brake run on the opposite side of the mountain to where you started, then turn left and back into the station. I must admit that I've always thought Wild Eagle looked like a very bland ride. Wing coasters already tend to be not too forceful and very graceful, and I'm a big fan of Gatekeeper and Thunderbird, but those are very unique rides or at least feature unique signature elements such as the wing over drop on Gatekeeper, as well as the near misses featured on both rides, and Thunderbird of course has the launch going for it. In contrast, Wild Eagle features no real standout moments. The inversions are all very typical fare for B&M coasters, are ordered in a typical way, and as far as near misses, there is a moment as you are going into the first helix where you go under the supports of the lift hill which is pretty cool, and also a bit of a hedge hopper flying under the track above as you slide into the brakes but Wild Eagle features no signature elements whatsoever. It is all very generic and a copy and paste B&M layout. The weakest point of this ride is definitely that uninspired layout. In defense of this ride though, it did open in 2012 as the very first B&M wing coaster in America and one of the first wing coasters ever built in general, so it didn't have much to compete with at the time, though X-Flight would open only two months later in the US. The unique setting of this ride, being situated on a large hill, does work to this ride's advantage. The ride time is pretty decent at about 42 seconds from drop to break, and there is no mid-course, which is great, and I found the pacing to be quite excellent on Wild Eagle, actually. The thing that surprised me most was how much this ride hauled throughout the course. It felt very fast and well-paced throughout the entire ride due to the lack of trims or a mid-course, and is also very smooth as is expected with the wing coaster model. I've never had much of an issue with the vest restraints, so those were fine for me as well. There's very little in terms of negative G's here. 
The only airtime at all throughout the ride was the very small airtime hill before the figure 8 finale, which was weak floater at best. Once again, that is to be expected with a wing coaster though. There aren't any super strong positive G's like at the bottom of Gatekeeper's Drop, but I was also surprised with the amount of force that Wild Eagle did have at the bottom of the drop and through the zero G roll. Overall, what really surprised me with Wild Eagle was how great the pacing was and the speed. The ride just sped through the entire layout without ever letting up, and that feeling of speed is what ultimately led to me enjoying Wild Eagle much more than I ever thought I would going into it. With all of that in mind, my personal score for Wild Eagle is an 8 out of 10. What this ride lacks in airtime, force, and originality, it makes up for in its setting, speed, and pacing in my opinion, and I have this ranked slightly lower, but very close to Gatekeeper in my overall rankings, and in my opinion, it holds its own against a ride such as that. Maybe my very low expectations for this ride led to me thinking much more highly of this ride than most would, but I am a fan of the wing coasters I've experienced and Wild Eagle was definitely no different for me, which was a very pleasant surprise. This is a very solid supporting coaster in Dollywood's lineup, a true crowd pleaser with great capacity, and brought Dollywood into the new era of the park with modern large scale thrill oriented coasters. What are your thoughts on Wild Eagle at Dollywood? Were you surprised by it as I was, or were you left disappointed and wanting more? Be sure to let me know your thoughts, and thank you all so much for watching this review. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews and unique amusement park content, as well as liking my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and following me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.